Hello, everyone, and welcome to Our Small Majority. And today we'll be talking with nobody. <laughs> we are here, me and Matthew are here. Hi. We are currently preparing for season two. And we just wanted to go over just a few of our favorite episodes and encourage you all to share your favorite moments, your favorite episodes inside season one, and give you a little bit of what to expect. Yeah. So season one's been a lot of fun. It was like our uh, test season. You know, we didn't know exactly what to expect. We had a lot of people we wanted to talk to and we were able to. I know our last episode, we were going to talk to some board game inventors Unfortunately, we had to reschedule that. So that's going to be hopefully in season two. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just I, I just want to say we had a lot of fun testing out season one. And we have so much uh, ideas for how to improve the show in season two and new kinds of episodes we want to make. Yeah, most definitely. I'm actually pretty excited for season two because even though that we had to reschedule for the second for second season for our next guest we have a whole other list that we're currently working on for new people um, new concepts and new issues that need to be tackled today during this time and for our last interviewee uh, Malik Rahim if you were able to speak listen to what he had to speak on we are so honored and so grateful that he was able to share with us his previous experiences inside the Black Panther Party yeah. and just the work that he's done in New Orleans concerning Hurricane Katrina and prison reform. He's actually working on another movement, another initiative after Hurricane Laura hit in Louisiana just now. Yeah, and they were saying that during the uh, hurricane surge that uh, the water levels in some areas were supposed to reach over 20 feet. And yeah. we, we got really worried because we we just talked to Malik about Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. So we felt like we had to contact him and see what was happening, you know, see right. how he was doing. Yeah, and um, I was actually able to give him a call um, not too long ago just to see if everything was all right on his end and what damage was done. Fortunately, it didn't hit New Orleans where he stays. He said if it if it hit him, New Orleans wouldn't be there anymore because they wouldn't be able to to take another hit like that again. But unfortunately, other parts of the state was affected and people are now housed in hotels with vouchers. However, that won't last very long. So he's doing everything that he can in order to make sure that mm -hmm. they have the necessary tools and housing and food in order to you know keep going. And we'll do everything that we can here at OSM to spread the word and support them any way that we can. And you'll actually be hearing from us. So you can hear updates on what's going on over there in New Orleans in different ways that you can help and spread the word yourself. Yeah. In regards to other guests that we've had on the show, I actually just wanted to give a few updates for a few other guests. So one of our first guests, Casper, Last time that I spoke with him, he was on his way to university. Well, I'm happy to announce that he actually got in. He's going Ooh. to be a psychology major nice. at the University of Copenhagen, the same university that housed me while I was studying abroad. So I'm super proud of him, super excited. Last time I talked to him, he was <laughs> in a summer in a summer house <laughs> with his kids because the prisons allowed him to take a summer vacation for 14 days <laughs> so before he went on awesome. to um go get his ba inside of psychology and that's what he's working on diligently and i'm keeping close contact with him and in regards to any of our other guests i know that caramet Ryder is still working on her initiative in order to make sure that bas are available here in california for prison inmates. So for inmates that want to further their education beyond an associate's degree to a BA, I know she's been working doggedly 
on that initiative at the University of California, Irvine, and we'll keep you posted on that to see where she is. And I know that in regards to Christina Eubin, one of the guests that we had for prenatal substance exposure in her work in South Africa, she actually had to retract her funds for this year inside South Africa due to COVID-19. However, she was able to redirect her funds towards the COVID efforts here in the United States. So she's using those same funds that she was originally going to use for South Africa for further research to better help with the research here in the United States concerning COVID-19 and how it affects pregnant women and what, what can be put into place for more protection. And also different testing means as well when it comes to solitary bioscience and what can they do to make it more accessible for people here in this country. So that's really exciting. And there's just so much going on uh, with both the uh, people that we've had the honor of having on our show so far, and even the people that we hope to have on the show later on. So Christian, what were your favorite moments for season one? Damn, there's so many of them, but I would have to say our first official episode with Admeet. The way we approach education is often like so fixed and regimented. And I think it's it's really interesting because we oftentimes don't stop and realize that we're pretty like young in terms of our education system as a country, right? Like education wasn't compulsory in all 50 states in the United States until 1918. Just to like put it in perspective for you, right? Like the notion of education for everybody, right? is not even like a constitutional right. You know, we have the right to bear arms, but the right to like read is like not a, is not a thing. He was so inspiring and really just an example of what can be done inside mm-hmm. um, not only protesting, but, you know, education itself. And it just exposed so many different things <laughs> that I didn't know. And I was like, what? Really? <laughs> and it made me go back and like Google, you know, a few things that he said. Uh, and I was like, that's really true. And it just inspired me to just even further my research and just educate myself even more on American history and mm-hmm. how we can promote social advocacy inside of our educational system here. So I, I would say that would be my favorite. What would, what's, what would be your yeah. favorite, Matt? I think one of my favorites would be uh, the one we had with Tian and Chen, who uh, oh, yeah, worked yeah. at China's CDC. I gotta say I was, well, I was very very frustrated by the U.S. CDC at the beginning of COVID. Um, uh, I've been talking this with uh, some of my professors, and they agree that a lot of credible sources in the U.S. like have been giving conflicting information. Um, so I remember it was the beginning of March. Uh, you know, COVID started to spread uh, in the U.S. And then US CDC says said it was not necessary to wear a mask. And then later they changed their statement. Mm. It was very confusing for me at first because uh, at the beginning of March, US CDC said it's not necessary to wear a mask, just wash your hands frequently and wearing a mask is not necessary, etc. But all the CDC centers in Asia, they emphasize it's necessary to wear a mask. I just felt like that was a, I don't know, I kind of felt like it was a interesting episode because I was able to ask a lot of what I felt were ignorant questions mm-hmm. about China because in America, there, there's a lot of propaganda against China. So mm-hmm. it, was, it, was, it was fun for me to kind of throw out these questions that may seem ridiculous, but these are questions that you know, are always talked about in the U.S. Right. I liked a lot of the parallels when it came to, like, when we would ask him, oh, you know, what did, it's called, you know, the the Wuhan virus and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, you know, viruses that happen inside America, we don't call it the American virus and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like a little offensive. <laughs> fair enough, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> or like, for example, like the news is always skewed inside the different countries. Like, 
oh, you know, what did your government have to say about the riots that happened over there in Hong Kong? And he's like, mm-hmm. actually, what they said was. So that was very interesting. I think one thing that I, I should have asked that I that I, at, in the moment I didn't was when we talked about that, when, when we were talking about how, when we were kind of joking around that like America was calling it the Wuhan virus. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, we don't call the, the we, di- we didn't call the Spanish flu the American virus. Mm-hmm. It was a Spanish flu, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think one thing that I wish I asked him was, or, or mentioned was that, you know, there was a bit of a cover up that China was doing with the coronavirus. You know, they weren't admitting how dangerous it really was mm-hmm. and how how bad it really was. Mm-hmm. And then it spread and spread and spread. It only when it was kind of too late, they're like, "Oh yeah, this is a this is a problem." And we're like, yeah. "Well, now it's kind of yeah, well, too we late, can see that you know? now." So, so I wish I wish I, I asked him that and we talked about that more. But mm-hmm. at this point, it's like what's happening in America is our government's yeah. fault. <laughs> and a lot of the people's fault for not listening to the mm-hmm. guidelines that we have for, for the right. safe, health and safety guidelines. Right. So Another one of my favorite moments would be with Kermit Ryder, simply because it was just it's so good to talk to her again. There are so many problems with this. I I would say they basically fall into two categories. One is that, as we know, solitary confinement itself is a a health concern. It can create um, and exacerbate mental health problems. And I have a piece documenting all the ways it can create and exacerbate physical health problems. And so it doesn't seem like a safe place to put someone facing a serious illness. But the other big problem with solitary confinement is the impact it has on a prison population if the prisoners know their response to them being ill is that they're going to be placed in these highly restrictive conditions of confinement, they then hide that they don't feel well as long as they can. And that's a that's anecdotes I've been hearing from folks across the country is that prisoners are afraid to say they're sick because they're going to be sent to solitary confinement. And that's really scary. They won't have any contact with anyone. They're afraid they won't be able to get treatment if they need it. And so they're hiding they're sick. And of course, that's the last thing we want in a pandemic with a highly infectious disease like this. We want to be able to know as soon as people feel sick and try to treat them she was the reason why I was able to get connections in Denmark <laughs> because of her work and what she does mm-hmm. inside prisons around the world. And it, I think it was just very insightful on how we treat our inmates here during COVID-19 and what's being done and what our, where our priorities are at. You know, we're letting inmates out, but, you know, trying to force our children inside school. So it, it's very backwards of what's going on yeah what's going on these days Mm -hmm. and it was it was really nice just to hear how she clarified and how she really exposed just the problems that we have inside this country and even provided solutions as well which is usually not very common inside of a talk or a lecture or anything like that inside academia Mm -hmm. that there is no solutions that's offered (laughs) that's offered it's just you know theoretical so it's, it was refreshing to hear solutions and actually what can be done. Yeah, I would say that that, that would be another moment for me. Mm-hmm. All right. So we just want to talk a little bit about what are our plans for next season. So Christian, what are our plans? Well, I know that last season was really interview-based. And it was a lot of you know, Q&A, just learning about our guests and things like that. So we wanted to shake it up you know, a little bit for the next season and really provide a different feel that's refreshing for you, our audience. So even though that we will have a lot of Q&A and a lot of interviews, it's very informative and have a lot of special guests when it comes to either researchers or professors or advocates or, you know, entertainers. We also want to, you know, incorporate different things like special artwork that's featured that we've been offered before, or even reading um, prompts with entertainers and stuff, you know, for skits and writing and just little comedy sketches that we have in mind as well. What what would these uh, sketches be based about? Do you have an example? Yeah. So I have an example since me and Matt actually have a background filmmaking. We 
have written scripts before and have done certain things before and we came up with the idea of coming with little mini comedy sketches that both entertaining and very lighthearted but at the same time informative as well so for example I know that one idea was spewed that it would be two people thrown back in time somewhere, let's say the 1800s oh, man. <laughs> or the 1600s. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'll have one person of color and then one person who's white. And they'll have completely different attitudes <laughs> about having this sort of time jump happen to them. Um, and different experiences. I can so only you, imagine. I can yeah. only imagine what kind of uh, situation that would be. I mean, I can you know, like, for example, take me and Matt. For example, I'm an African American male. He's white. So, if we were to jump back into the 1800s, trust my attitude and my approach and my concerns would be completely different than his. Well, my 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 family is from uh, Russia, so. I'd probably be walking around picking potatoes, you know. We probably, I'd be in Moscow picking potatoes and, and <laughs> in the snow. <laughs> oh man! But we um, that's just one of the ideas that we've been sort of working and sort of tinkering with. Yeah, um, it, it, it might be super cringy. Uh, it might not be, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun to just try it out, test it out, see what happens. Oh, you know? Yeah. And yeah, we also, yeah, there, we have, we have a few special episodes we're thinking of doing, you know, like maybe focusing on a specific topic Mm -hmm. and just have us talk about it. Maybe invite some guests, some of our friends and stuff who uh, work internationally, like do film. We have a lot of friends who make films internationally, like in South Africa and stuff. And we could talk about whatever it is we want to with them and see how that goes, you know? Right. But there's, there's plenty of potential in regards to season two so all it takes is just organizing all of the things and all the ideas that we've Mm -hmm. had so far so we've been dealing with that and then also i know that matthew and i have been you know progressing with our own personal lives as well me preparing for graduate school and working on an article right now with christina yubin and one of my teammates there Mm -hmm. and then matthew also working inside the film industry and picking up more work as attempting to during COVID. Right. <laughs> doing doing I what I can really during COVID. Back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that we have different responsibilities in different tracks of life, but we definitely, definitely, definitely want to continue on with this podcast and continue bringing you content that yes. is both informative and entertaining um and we definitely appreciate your support and your feedback on the current work that we've done because mm-hmm. we definitely did not expect to get this far <laughs> um <laughs> did not expect to get this far it was we've said it time and time again this was just an idea that just spewed off one night and here we are now <laughs> um so we We are looking to the future now. Yeah. Very hopeful for the future and definitely looking forward to what it holds. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, we'd love to hear your thoughts, any ideas you might have for the show. You know, what what do you enjoy? Do you enjoy the interviews or are are you interested in uh, actually, you know, our special episodes that we're coming up with? Which which do you care more to hear about? Because this essentially is, is for you to listen to. So you know, you could hit us up on our social media. We have an Instagram is our small majority. Our Twitter page is OSM pod, or you could email us at our small majority at gmail.com. And, you know, we're always open to suggestions because it helps us determine, you know, what's best for the show and what people actually like to listen to. Right. So yeah, with that, I mean, I guess we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. And you'll definitely hear from us soon, if not through new episodes, but from different posts, um, again, different artwork, and also just things on where our um, previous guests are today, and even things that's going on around the world that you can get involved in. 
so yeah we look forward to you know meeting up with you guys next time and again as always thank you for listening to osm bye-bye bye-bye